Uh, hello, just a sound and video check again. Uh, can you hear and see me all right? Okay, uh, I would also like um, signal at the fifth minute of my speech. Fifth. Okay. So, I, would like, I am the first speaker for the proposition, and I would like to open this debate by thanking all of our wonderful judges for coming here to judge us today and for our fellow competitors for coming here to debate with us. Without you both, this debate wouldn't be possible. I would now like to begin our debate and our side of the debate by giving a few definitions that I believe are important to the debate. Beginning with the word abolish. What does abolish mean? It means to end the observance or effect of something or someone. I would also like to clarify what the Olympic Games are. The Olympics are one of the most prestigious and influential sports events around the whole world, with participants representing over 200 nations. I would now like to begin by introducing the first argument of the proposition, which is that the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, which is the powerhouse of the Olympic Games, is corrupted. As an example, we take the 2002 bid for the Winter Olympic Games, which was in Salt Lake City, Utah, we believe that the Olympic Games are corrupted not only because of the accusations of this bid for the 2002 Winter Olympic Games, then there the IOC was accused of accepting gifts, um, bids and other things to make them more sure of their decision to choose Salt Lake City as the host city of the 2002 Winter Olympic Games. Our second argument today is the the Olympic Games are a very established platform for spreading political ideologies and spreading political ideas. As one of the biggest examples we can give you are the 1936 Summer Olympic Games, which were held in Berlin, Germany. There, Adolf Hitler and the Nazi elite used the Olympic Games to showcase the superiority of the Aryan race. Not only that, but four-time gold medalist Jesse Owens was forced to enter through a back door to a reception held in his name simply because he was a black Olympic athlete same games. I would also like to point out an example from the, these past Olympics, the 2020 Summer Olympic Games in Tokyo, where the Chinese were used their platform as an established Olympic team to show their superiority over the United States of America, something my teammate will elaborate more on. Another huge problem we, the proposition, have with the Olympic Games is their forcible relocation of innocent citizens in the host cities. As one of the biggest examples, we take the 2008 Beijing Summer Olympic Games, where one and a half million people were evicted without, without being asked or given any money or resources to be compensated as of the forcefully, forceful relocation. Another example we can give you are the 2016 Rio Summer Olympic Games, where a whole local community was forced to be moved due to the need for new highways to be built for the Olympic Games because the city expected a lot of tourists to come thanks to the Olympic Games. Another thing we believe is a huge problem with the Olympic Games is the fact that the IOC standards are huge, especially for the building of stadiums, which often results in the need to, for new stadiums to be built in the host cities. With new stadiums being built, workers often take casualties due to the overlooking of the International Olympic Committee. We believe that no human life should be sacrificed in order for new stadiums to be built when stadiums already exist in the host cities. Another one, an example we can give you with those with the Olympics and workers working to build new stadiums are the fact that one woman, due to the hard work that she had to do as working for the Olympic Games, she even took her life because of how much she was forced to work. So I think the Olympic Games negatively affect not only the host cities and the citizens of the host cities, but they also affect the athletes and the fans as well. As an example, again, we take the Tokyo 2020 Summer Olympic Games, where one of the most famous gymnasts, Simone Biles, chose her mental health over several of her competing categories due to the immense pressure that was put on her by fans and 
other competitors. We support BIOS because the Olympics are deemed to be, as I said, one of the most prestigious and influential sports events, and they are deemed to allow only the best of the best athletes from around the world to compete. So then why is this pressure necessary and why should it even exist? Um, yes, UI? Um, I wanted to answer the question, but I guess. Don't you, don't you think that the mental pressure is an inevitable part of being an athlete? No, I do not think that, that is the case because, especially with the Olympics, because the Olympics, as I said, are deemed to be one of the most prestigious and important sports events. And if you have already qualified to be part of the Olympic Games, I, we don't believe that more pressure should be put on athletes since they have already done one of, they have done a great job of their sport. I. Um, qualifying for the Olympic Games with their achievements in the given sport. With that, I would like to close down the first speech for the proposition team because we believe the Olympic Games should be abolished due to the many negative effects that the IOC and other spectators, fans, etc. overlook. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I also realized that I did make a mistake and I forgot to announce the motion. The motion is this house would abolish the Olympic Games. Sorry, everybody. Um, we will next hear from the first speaker of the opposition. Uh, hello, can you hear and see me well? Uh, okay, I will start in three, two, one. So, oh, dear panel, we believe that uh, we accept that there are many problems around the organization of the Olympic Games. However, we must not allow their abolishment, as they are a long tradition and a cultural heritage. In my speech, I would firstly like to assess a few few things said by the proposition team. First of all, uh, about uh, their statement that the IOC is corrupted and uh, that uh, the Olympic Games promote political ideas. So corruption and political ideology are something that exists in many aspects of our life. So we don't know, we don't see how this applies only to the Olympics. Um, the second the second thing I would like to assess is uh, the mental pressure that is put on athletes. We believe that this is something that comes with being uh, a part of a world uh, sporting event of any world sporting event and uh, this is uh, something natural that happens if you are a competitor in in any world sporting event as i said so we don't see how that applies only to the olympics uh, so i would like to present you our mechanism now which is to introduce reforms uh, re beginning with choosing uh, a permanent host places in one city on each continent uh, the Olympics will be held in these six sites in order, and the cities and countries chosen will be such that they have already hosted an Olympic Games season and are experienced. This will remove the problems that uh, the proposition team mentioned about the displacements uh, that happened during the Olympics and uh, the facilities that are built that cause, that, uh, cause uh, violation and exploitation of workers. Uh, in, with our mechanism, uh, we will see representation of many different cultures, which is uh, one of the main values of uh, the Olympic Games. And less money will be spent on building new facilities each time, as they are, are usually left behind after the Olympics. Uh, so this means that there will be more resources and time for focusing on the athletes and developing the sport itself. Uh, now I'm going to, to present you our first argument that the games are a driving motivation and inspiration for athletes and young people all over the world. And our second speaker, Annie, will present you the, our second argument that the event has vital historic, traditional and cultural va value in her second speech. Let's start with the first argument about the motivation and inspiration for athletes and we believe that this is the most important thing that will be said in this debate uh, the olympic games are a triumph for sports careers careers as they are considered foremost the foremost event 
and it is the biggest world sports competition. Everyone watches the Olympic Games. Well, not everyone, but uh, millions of people watch the Olympic Games, no matter if they're very into sports or not. So it is a big achievement to win a medal in them to, or to, to participate in them even. And this is the peak of the careers of athletes and we shouldn't rob them of this opportunity. The second uh, reason why our argument is true is uh, that uh, the Olympic Games create career opportunities on a worldwide and national level. Uh, many sponsors, managers or organizations gather from all over the world to organize them and uh, this uh, gives them a career opportunity and uh, opportunity for develop development. The third reason why this is true, our argument is true, is that athletes become role models for young people when they watch them win medals or work hard in order to, to achieve their success. When kids watch their fa favorite sports people on the Olympics, they get inspired and look up to them and they may even pursue a career in, in sports because of their favorite athletes that they see in the Olympic Games. The fourth reason why this is true is uh, that not so popular sports get the recognition they deserve. And this is a motivation for, for athletes. There are some kind of sports that are not so widespread and famous around the globe, such as skateboarding, for example, or biathlon, uh, that uh, are included in the Olympics and uh, don't uh, get many, are not so famous otherwise. There is huge media broadcast and showcase of these sports and uh, the athletes that work hard to, to, to succeed in them deserve that. And it is an incentive for them to continue to work hard and to, to win all these achievements. So why is our argument important? Why is it the most important thing that will be said in this debate? First of all, it is a vital event for athletes to shine and show off their talent and skills after a long, intense preparation. Uh, like the, the proposition team said, yes, they do endure uh, a lot of mental pressure and a lot of physical pressure, but it is all worth it in the end when they achieve uh, a, a, a success that uh, is the peak of their careers. Uh, the second reason why this is important is that it is essential for young people to have something to inspire them to become a sports person. Uh, and, uh, the, the athletes, like we said, motivate the kids, motivate kids and other young people to take up a sport and to to pursue a career in them and to develop in it. The third reason why it is important is uh, the fact that uh, not so popular sports get recognition and the Olympic Games are crucial due to the fact that they give them the needed recognition, which at the same time further motivate athletes who are doing these kinds of sport to, to continue doing that. These incentives are fundamental for their career. Uh, what do the Olympics give us? Uh, they give us more motivated athletes, having the chance to show their talent at such a big sporting event, all the, the people in the world watching them, and uh, to, to give them a, a boost in their career. Uh, more young people are inspired by their, their sports idols to take up or a sport or to continue doing it. And this can be this can be vital to their career or to their future. Um, it gives us a preservation of different kinds of sport. Like we said, there are sports that uh, gain recognition during the Olympics and that otherwise wouldn't be so successful and the athletes wouldn't have uh, a lot of motivation to, to continue do, doing them. And I would like to say that the intense and long preparation and training would be worth it in the end. When you are, when the athlete is, is standing uh, in front of, in front of the the people in the audience, uh, and has won a medal, this achievement is something that uh, that cannot be replaced by anything else. So uh, now I would like to to finish my speech. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we will hear from the second speaker of the proposition. Okay, I trust everybody can see and hear me properly. Okay, now let me begin with my speech. Okay, so before I begin with uh, elaborating on my teammates' previous arguments and sharing some of my own, I'm just going to firstly, for the first and last time in this debate, agree with the opposition. Yes, 
We absolutely agree, and it's, it is an undisputed fact that the Olympic Games are a long time tradition and give inspiration to many, many people. Absolutely, there is no deny there. Okay, now let me elaborate on some of the things that my teammate previously mentioned. The first thing was about political goals. You see, the Olympic Games, not only in the 1930s, 36, um, while, while Hitler was in power, were used to, to empower political goals. No, this goes on to this day. In 2021, like I believe she said, the CCP used the Olympic Games to showcase their dominance over the USA. Why does this happen? Because the Olympic Games allowed it. Now, I believe the first speaker of the opposition stated something along the lines of that this happens in a lot of sports tournaments. No, that is not true. In fact, this has never happened in any football tournament ever. Why? Because nobody allows it there. Uh, yeah, thank you for the mark. Why? Because absolutely nobody allows it there. It is unallowed because at the end of the day, this is a sports competition and politics have nothing to do with it. The Olympic Games allow it, however, and they have been allowing it for almost 100 years now. Now, second thing, the second argument was about uh, the relocation of innocent people. Yes, that is happening, and that is happening in a massive scale. It happens every time there is a, an Olympic Games and a host has been picked. Now, that host, speaking of that host, the city or the country is forced to pay billions and billions of dollars for preparation of the stadium and the resources in the entire city. During that time, innocent people are being basically forced to leave their house just for the sake of the Olympic Games. Now, some of them do receive compensations, absolutely true. A lot of them, however, aren't even asked for permissions, neither do they receive a reasonable compensation for basically somebody taking away their home forcefully. With that being said, I would like to continue to the point of corruption. Now, corruption in the Olympic Games has been proven various times, and I will give an example, which leads me to another argument we have, cheating. Cheating in the Olympic Games is, well, I dare say, tolerated. It has happened, it is a thing, it's existent, and I even dare say tolerated. Why? Because there have been numerous cases of the organizers of the Olympic Games being bought, being bribed to close their eyes to teams cheating in the Olympic Games. As a proof of that, the Russian team has been caught cheating several times, has been banned a few times, but has been caught cheating even a lot more times. I'll take your question in a second. The Russian teams has been caught cheating many times and it hasn't been banned every single time, thus proving that the Olympic Games tolerate and allow for teams to cheat. Now I would like to take your question. Uh, don't you think that cheating is a part that can happen in any sport event, not only in the Olympics? How is that connecting exactly to the Olympics Games? Yeah. Okay, yeah, uh, cheating is a problem, indeed. Cheating is a problem, but in this case, I don't believe it is fixable because cheating is, like I said, tolerated in the Olympic Games. In other sports, yes, cheating still happens in other comp competitions, but it is not tolerated. I have never heard of any other competition tolerating cheating like the Olympic Games. Just because many people uh, watch, many people compete, and all the organizers care about really is making the most amount of profit. Why? Well, um, during the beginning of coronavirus, of the whole pandemic, the organizers of the Olympic Games were asked to delay the Games for a year later. They denied. They absolutely refused because they would be unprofitable for them. Therefore, they led the Olympic Games, and as a result, there were 100,000 new COVID cases, which basically endangered the lives of a lot of people, bringing me to, the point, to a point that my teammate previously made, construction workers. Now, while there's, there have been many resources spent on preparing the stadiums, there aren't enough money spent because just because it is a huge construction that requires a lot of people and a lot of workforce, a significant amount of workforce to get done safer. Now, the workforce isn't enough. There aren't enough money being spent to hire workers. As a proof to that, I have the fact that, according to statistics, various there have been various cases of people taking their own lives due to overworking in a construction of the Olympic Games. Other than that, the fact that there are not enough workers, uh, just a second, puts even more weight on every on the remaining workers of the construction, thus causing them to overwork and do their job less effectively, thus endangering their lives while doing so. I'll take your question now. About the COVID situation, don't you think it's temporary and uh, it would not endanger people that's in the future? Uh, no, it is. Yes, it might be temporary, but in the meantime, uh, when this took place, we have we had no vaccine, we had no idea what COVID is, what it does, how it spreads, we had no information at all, and it was actually a very serious threat. It took people's lives on a daily basis. They disregarded that completely and caused a lot of people to lose their lives. Well, they didn't, while they didn't directly cause it, they allowed for it, 
they allow for it and they organize the Olympic Games despite the warnings of various countries and uh, and the pleads of various countries to cancel the Olympic Games for another year. They didn't do that because their primary goal is profit. I dare say their only goal. Now, continuing on to my next argument that I'm going to present to you. This is terrorist attacks. Now, while a lot of resources are, are spent on their organization and due to the during the duration of the Olympic Games, the fact is that not enough are spent on security. Why? Because the Olympic Games are such is a, such a huge event, not enough a lot of people are it's going to create a lot of conflict between countries between people between groups of people therefore causing terrorist attacks it has happened numerous times uh, one of the most famous examples is the attack in München, where 11 athletes were kidnapped and executed and the german spec ops could not stop the attack why because not enough measures are taken to secure the olympic games not enough measures are taken uh, are taken to make sure that this that this uh, threat doesn't occur at the Olympic Games. So the security is not on point. The work, the construction is not on point. The Olympic Games forcefully kick people out of their own homes, out of their own homes, just to organize the sport. We have, I believe, I have proven that their primary goal and their only goal is profit. So keeping that in mind, keeping the argument for political goals in mind, do you think that the fact that the Olympic Games inspire people and athletes to work hard, do you think that that alone is enough to justify every single argument and problem I have just made? And keep in mind, I have not stated fixable problems. I have stated problems that have been proven to be unfixable. Speaking of which, let me continue with those set problems. Sexism. Now, women, ever since their allowance to participate in the Olympic Games, because at first they weren't even allowed, Okay, thank you. Because at first they weren't even allowed. Ever since then, women have been forced to wear revealing and very uncomfortable clothes. Now, while this is a fixable problem, the Olympic Games really haven't even looked at that problem for years. For many, many years, they haven't even considered fixing that problem, thus proving the Olympic Games to be even sexist. Now, I ask you, keeping all that in mind, is really inspiration of the athletes and children enough to justify all these problems? especially keeping in mind that there are also other tournaments and other sport events that can inspire people and can attract a uh, public. Not as big as the Olympic Games, but still a pretty significant public. Do you think that the Olympic Games is the only way of entertainment and inspiration for little children and athletes? Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we will hear from the second speaker of the opposition for an eight-minute speech. Oh, just a few. Okay. Okay. I'll start in three, two, one. Dear panel, when something is problematic, don't abolish it. Abolish the problem. That is why what we from the side of opposition from the side of the opposition are trying to do. We want to continue developing the sports sector and to drive motivation in both young people and athletes to continue developing both the sport and themselves, which we think is the most important in this debate, as our first speaker already explained. And we want to further remove the obstacles that are um, threatening the Olympic game from being the successful thing that they are and from being the incentive for young people to be developing in the sports um, area and also to continue this histor historic and tradition this historic and traditional impact that they have been having through the years since they have been happening what am i going to do in my speech i will first start by def defending some of the points that were rebutted um some of the yep and then i'll present you our second argument which is that the olympic games are bringing economic benefits to both the host city and the host country and um, afterwards i will rebut the arguments that were presented in both the first and second spe speech of the proposition by also comparing them to our arguments so what was mainly pointed by both speakers of the proposition was that there is a very big corruption existing in Olympic Games. And we believe that the corruption exists everywhere and not in the Olympic Games. And that shouldn't be a single reason why we should abolish them. They are telling us that 
in football, for example, there is now corruption, but no, there is corruption in every sector and in every area of sports as well. And as an example of that, I may give, for example, the elections of a president for the football union in Bulgaria. It was very corrupted. And that is why the current president won for a second time. I will accept your question later. About the relocation of people, we agree that there is a big human violations by relocating people. And that is why through our mechanism, by choosing permanent host cities, six different cities across the world in different conti continents in order to present all cultures, we will fight against this problem and we will also fight against the problem of having to build different facilities each and every time for the Olympic Games. And we'll also ensure that these people who are who have been relocated so far, that this is not going to happen again, will prevent it. And what they also mentioned about corruption is about cheating. Cheating, in order to prevent both corruption and cheating, um, what is needed are reforms. And what is needed is transparency. And what is needed is that there is paid higher attention to that. And that people who are doing that take their consequences in order to prevent it in the future. Now, I'll go on with presenting our second argument, which is that the Olympic Games are bringing economic benefits. I will give you three reasons why this is true. First of all, there is a reduction in the cost of building facilities. With our mechanism, we'll achieve that by creating permanent homes in different parts of the world. These facil facilities are usually built in parts of the cities which are in need of renovation. And with that, with building these new facilities in such places, we'll sustain the urban environment, but also really reduce the need of building new facilities again over and over, which are left behind after the competition itself. The Olympic Games create employment opportunities, like for example, in building the construction sites or in monitoring them. And by creating permanent facilities, there is going to be a higher need of them to be monitored for the future when the Olympics will be happening there. So it will create additionally more jobs. And also <clears throat> there is a large number of tourists with, which creates the needs for businesses to be having more employees. And due to infrastructure improvements, jobs are also created. And even if this infrastructure um even if these infrastructure improvements that create jobs are not temporary, the infrastructure improvements benefit the whole city and the country in the long term. And I will mention that further in the third reason why this argument is true, which is that it sh the Olympics enable the whole city and country to showcase to the world and also boost tourism. First of all, the infrastructure improvements continue to benefit the city in the long term, as I just mentioned. So that could be building hotels, airports, railways, roads, and other things like that. And they are making tourism in the city more appealing because of these new improvements. Thus, they attract more tourists in the long term. And secondly, the city and the country are getting worldwide recognition and boost its reputation. That is happening because sponsors, media, and athletes usually visit the city six months before and six months after the game, which brings additional revenues. And there is a lot of popularity going around the city. And secondly, why is this argument important? It is an act of fighting unemployment and creating new jobs. Also, the massive spendings for constantly building a construction site are reduced. The money are invested, but the product is used and not left behind, which creates it's a bad environmental impact as natural habitats are demolished and the building causes the rise in air pollution. And we are preventing that from happening by introducing these permanent homes, which we believe is one of the most effective um, mechanisms to fight against the problems that the Olympics Games are having. But also, at the same time, we are continuing to develop the sports sector and to create motivation for people to be developing in sports and to give athletes a a stage where they can perform and where they can showcase themselves. And I'd like to move on by re to rebut some of the things that were said in the first and second speech of the proposition. And one of these things was that outlets are affected mentally and physically by the pressure that they're having that they have to prepare for the Olympic Games. But at the same time, they're outlets and they're preparing for any sports event or competition that they're having in the same time that they would do as the Olympics. The Olympics is just giving them a bigger stage where they could perform. Um, and that is happening in other competitions as well, but we're not abolishing them. Why should we abolish the Olympic Games? Also, 
about the workers who are being exploited when building construction sites, I think that I was very clear why this would be prevented because of the permanent homes that we will be introducing. Something else that was mentioned in the first speech of the proposition was the spreading of political ideas, which was happening, for example, when the Olympics were held in Nazi Germany. Well, I think that is a very relevant example because the Nazi Germany was a very big problem in the past, and it is absolutely normal for that to happen also on the Olympic Games. And it, we cannot compare what is happening in the modern world today to what was happening then. And they are the example about Chinese showing superiority over the Americans. The Americans and the Chinese are trying to show superiority over each other everywhere. Why should we abolish the Olympic Games for that? And also, the Olympic game, the Olympics Games are a place where you should show your na national pride and actually fight to win something for your country. And we believe that this is also developing in competitors the, the feeling of patriotism, which is also very beneficial. For everything presented in this speech and for the, for the sake of developing the sports sector and giving athletes a stage where they could perform, vote for the side of the opposition. Thank you for that speech. We will next hear from the third speaker of the proposition. Yeah, that me. Uh, may I ask for a hand sign in the 17th minute mark? That would be. Yep, that, I will. Uh, thank you. That would be greatly appreciated. So I'm the third speaker of the proposition team, and uh, in my speech, I will uh, present our objections to the arguments made by the by the opposition team and also present one or two arguments on my own while evaluating what has been already said by my team. Uh, first, let's begin uh, with the objection to the, because this is one of the most important objections on the debate. The objection that corruption exists everywhere. Yes, corruption exists everywhere, but uh, corruption on such scale is not widely present in any organization, be it political or sports organization. Also, uh, this uh, corruption present in the, uh, in the Olympic Committee uh, is widely known. It's not something secret and public is paying attention, which even led to the 1999 <laughs> scandal uh, surrounding corruption, which uh, led to some uh, Olympic uh, Committee members being uh, fired and some resigning in shame. Uh, but this changed nothing. This changed nothing, and corruption is widely present to this day. From the, and it has been present from the very inception of the uh, Olympic Games in uh, the 19th century. Well, and, uh, the opposition team didn't uh, really present uh, a clear solution to the corruption being the center around the debate uh, because uh, I'll just call it, um, because there is no way. Uh, corruption uh, is a problem that has uh, tried to face it for uh, literally 10 years, uh, but nobody has uh, already uh, has succeeded. Also, I think I should uh, pre uh, present our objections to the other arguments. Okay, there's 60 pieces around every continent. Um, and how could you guarantee uh, the smaller nations I uh, wouldn't be discriminated against because just six cities and I suppose major nations will be the host, will, will be the permanent host of the Olympic Games. How would you guarantee discrimination doesn't occur? And uh, knowing the corruption which you even acknowledged, uh, how could you guarantee those six cities would be fairly uh, and uh, transparently chosen? Uh, chose because there is no way, uh, especially with that round of corruption. Uh, next argument uh, the Olympics were improving, uh, the Olympics were improving uh, the sport. Yes, but I believe, uh, especially uh, most of every modern sport has uh, uh, saw its uh, birth without the Olympics, uh, except the, since the javelin throws and so on. But uh, most uh, most of uh, modern sports uh, have developed without the Olympics, uh, because most modern sports were uh, conceived in the 19th century before the modern Olympics were even uh, uh, reborn. So this is not really a valid argument. Uh, also, I believe regional championships which should be, uh, which should be cheaper, which would require almost no uh, current almost no infrastructure to, uh, to um, take place. And also, I believe uh, it would require billions and billions of uh, dollars to host the Olympic Games. Uh, we have to show, uh, if the opposition uh, really is waiting around the uh, idea that athletes deserve the Olympic Games, or if the, uh, the spectators deserve the Olympic Games, because uh, there is uh, quite a big discrepancy because, uh, between their different arguments. Yes, your question. 
Uh, don't you think that uh, building facilities for other world championship events also cost billions and billions of money? Uh, most definitely not because uh, the different championships require very little in terms of uh, new facilities. As an uh, example, most, uh, most uh, capitals and uh, second grades around the world already have facilities uh, which could uh, suffice, for example, most have stadiums which are sufficient enough to host, uh, for example, football, cha uh, football championships or basketball championships. The requirements are actually very low. Uh, and uh, let's, let me turn to the uh, main, uh, the main uh, uh, the corruption in the, of the International Olympic Committee. Uh, the, those money spent on the Olympics not uh, only come from uh, the money spent on building air funnel through the, Olymp uh, to the IOC. Uh, also, the IOC has proven its uh, toleration of cheating, uh, which is really based on the, in the corruption of uh, the IOC. Uh, bribery, taking bits to the different uh, host cities. This is all a problem which uh, is not solvable. There have been solutions, all solutions tried, and none of them have worked uh, so far. On the other argument, uh, just as athletes are prepared uh, for the mental stress of the Olympics, or they participate in other competitions, yes, they are not exactly sure. A typical competition uh, lead to 60% of athletes having uh, mental breakdowns and uh, uh, mental issues. Because this is the official, and this is confirmed by the Olympic Committee, 60% uh, of athletes participating in the Olympic Games uh, suffer uh, as some, some, some type of mental uh, mental, uh, mental problems, uh, anxiety, depression, and doesn't really matter, as a direct result of the Olympic Games. And uh, I, there is no source that can confirm uh, such high uh, percent of athletes suffer from mental breakdowns uh, due to other competitions. Also, small, small scale guarantees. Uh, transparency and even yes, corruption exists everywhere. Even if corruption uh, still appears, uh, the scale will be so small because every sport gets its different, different uh, regional competition, which by the way, competitions already exist, meaning there is really no point in the Olympics. Uh, such small scale would uh, guarantee transparency, and uh, even if corruption does occur, uh, the consequences of uh, that corruption would not be uh, permanent damage. Would not lead to permanent damage. Other argument. Uh, Set. Um, just a second. But, uh, uh, probably the opposition does not uh, really uh, find arguments made to the politicizing, uh, politicizing the Olympic Games. Uh, okay, let me give you another clear example, uh, yet again connected with the Chinese. Uh, the nation of Taiwan, currently, because of uh, the system, because the Communist, uh, the Communist Republic of China was uh, influenced over the Olympic Committee. Now can play under their own flag and can listen even to their own anthem. They play under the flag of the Taiwanese Olympic Committee. Meaning they don't even play under their own flag because of uh, widespread corruption and widespread bullying. Also, uh, about achieving political goals, how many Olympic Games have been boycotted by half the world during the Cold War and even now? Uh, because of uh, political goals, someone, someone, somebody doesn't agree with anybody. Uh, this, is, uh, this is really not a solvable solution. Um, uh, solvable. Also about uh, achieving national pride uh, if you win the Olympic Games. Yes, but what if you lose the Olympic Games? What falls after that? What falls after that is of course humiliation because you lost. Uh, and this humiliation can lead to excessive nationalism and chauvinism uh, in defeated countries. To such an extent, to such an extent, there was even uh, a war, the 100 Hours War, fought between El Salvador and Honduras because a uh, lost football match, which led to ethnic tensions in both countries. And eventually for war. Uh, so the Olympic Games uh, lead only, uh, yes, they have plus, uh, yes, they have uh, positive sides, that, that's true. But uh, do those positive sides, which uh, are basically, yes, it will lead to temporary boost in the economy for uh, about six months, uh, and uh, to the pride of those uh, 300 athletes that win medals during the Olympic Games, thank you very much. Uh, is the, is, are those good sides, which are purely individual and temporary, uh, justify the corruption, uh, the suffering? Uh, uh, the mental breakdowns of uh, countries of athletes. Do these uh, consequences really justify uh, still having the Olympic Games, a tradition uh, of 2000 years ago? Because uh, my team doesn't really believe so. Thank you very much. That was my speech. Um, can I ask something? Because I had some problems with the connection before my speech, can I uh, leave and join again, again, in order to prevent further uh, implications? Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Tell me, please, if you see me and hear me well. OK. 
Okay, great. I'm really glad about that. Um, so should I start? Okay, okay. Three, two, one. Dear panel, proposition team tried to convince you that uh, the, the Olympic <coughs> should be uh, abolished uh, because of issues that uh, uh, pretty much uh, that are pretty much in every sporting event or uh, uh, around the world in uh, different situations. And uh, we already uh, said and mentioned that these these issues could be solved, and uh, we th they should not be the main reasons to abolish the Olympic Games that are quite cru crucial for athletes in our community. What I'm going to do in this speech, I'm going to analyze m the major crash points here in this debate. My first crash point is about the athletes, and my second crash point is about the host cities and country, uh, host country. So let's start by analyzing the first crash point about the athletes, because uh, we think that it's quite crucial uh, and the most affected group is the athletes. So, what do we hear from the proposition team? First, they say that athletes have a lot of mental pressure and uh, and this of the Olympic Games. But what is our response? We say that uh, uh, athletes, it is an inevitable inevitable part of being an athlete, and it it uh, it is something that they uh, um, they go through every sporting event, and they they work with psychologists that help them uh, get through uh, these mental uh, challenges, and it's it's okay because uh, you know at the end of the day they are, they are athletes and they should go through uh, physical challenges and so on. What else? Uh, they said uh, that uh, Olympic Olympic Games is to, uh, is uh, uh, cheating in the Olympic Games is tolerated, but we completely disagree with that because we don't think that cheating is tolerated in every uh, in any sporting event, and cheating is completely unacceptable. Unacceptable. Yes, they may they may ha there may have been cases in which uh, cheating happened, but we believe that uh, there are regulation and people who uh, look out for uh, these uh, issues, and this could be uh, watched out or looked at. Uh, so, no, thank you, I want to continue my point. Uh, about sexism, they say that uh, there is a lot of sexism in the Olympic Games. Look, sexism is an international issue. It is uh, in every field, uh, it is happening in every field uh, of our uh, world, not only in sport, but like uh, in every aspect. But uh, we as a, as, a, as a society are trying to fight with that. Uh, and. Uh, you know, we are improving and progressing, and even in the Olympic Games, there was a problem with sexism, yes, but uh, uh, it was, it was uh, like, uh, they tried to be to solve it, and uh, yeah, there may have been issues, but we as a society are more and more accepting more progressive beliefs about such things, and it is not only in the Olympic Games, as I, uh, as, as I said, and we already said. Uh, so... Uh, what else? They said that uh, there are sporting event, other sporting events. Uh, uh, no, thank you. I want to finish my point. Where athletes could uh, get uh, motivation and inspiration, but we, we, uh, yes, there are other sporting events. But we believe that the Olympic Games are the biggest world sporting event where uh, athletes could get uh, such recognition. Uh, as we already said, there are sponsors. They have career opportunities. They, this is their biggest chance to shine and. Uh, they uh, go through such intense uh, preparation uh, uh, to show off their skills and talent in the Olympic Games. And even even if they fail, they they go to the Olympic Games through quotas. Okay, so even even if they go to the Olympic Games, this is such an achievement. And countries still every country should still support their athletes, even though they fail and do not and uh, not do not win medals. At the end of the day, it is such an achievement that they even go uh, got to go to the Olympic Games. Uh, and we disagree with that uh, they uh, would be disappointed if they did not win. No, thank you. No, yes, yes, I'm going to accept the question before I move on. But uh, could you be please faster because I don't uh, have yes, time. Yes, I will be fast. Mm -hmm. So do you think that athletes needing psychologists is something normal and something that should happen in a prestigious yes. competition? Yes, yes. We believe that every sport person should see a psychologist and should visit and talk with psychologists because sport is, is an intense uh, uh, intense uh, work field, let's say. And uh, athletes go through such pressures and uh, uh, they have mental pressure. They uh, 
because of the physical one so every sport every athlete should visit a psychologist in order to uh, deal with the issues that they get if they do not do something right uh, because yeah it is normal for them to go uh, uh, see psychologists and this is uh, inevitable uh, as we said so uh, about that uh, we we already said that about the sport about the sport uh, sports that do not get enough recognition. Yeah, they still, they still, they still can exist without the Olympic Games. But, but they uh, athletes who do these sports get more and more motivated, and this is their chance on the Olympic Games to sh again shine and show their skills. And they're even more motivated because these sports rec uh, get international recognition, as we said, and they have more and more career opportunities. No, thank you. So, uh, without being s with that being said, let's move to the second question point about the host cities and the host countries. So they said that there is a big problem with corruption and uh, uh, political ideologies that intervene uh, Olympic uh, Games. But as we already said, yes, there is pretty much corruption in every aspect of our world. There is corruption uh, in pretty much everything, as we already mentioned, in other sporting event and so on but this problem could be dealt we can deal with this problem as society and we should we should not just stop the olympic games because there is a corruption uh, in, in this way we are going to stop every, pretty much everything because as you said there is corruption everywhere but on the other hand we need transparency no thank you we need transparency we need stricter regulation and we need awareness about this issue and this issue could be dealt with so uh, I, I, otherwise, other another thing is about the displacement of people and uh, uh, economic uh, issues. As we already said, with our mechanism, these issues could be prevented. Uh, we uh, believe that these issues still exist, okay, and we do not. We think that they are not okay. But as we said, with our mechanism, uh, th these displace these displacements would be prevented as much as possible, and uh, uh, such uh, there would be some things to compensate the, uh, the uh, if there are any displacements. Uh, the government would uh, compensate the, the, these people. So. Uh, uh, about the costs, as we already said with the mechanism, uh, we, we, we are going to choose uh, countries and cities that already have buildings and the uh, money w wouldn't be uh, used that much as in the past, because that is something we should work on and deal with uh, as, as the other issues. Uh, so, uh, what else? As we already said, on the other hand, yeah, there are problems that could be dealt with, but at the end of the day, the whole city gets also recognition on a, uh, on a worldwide level and uh, boost the economy by uh, tourists coming in the city and uh, making the public image of the city more and more popular. And in this way, uh, uh, it is <laughs> the, advantage, the advantages outweigh the, disadvantage, the disadvantages, let's say, at the end of the day. Uh, also, uh, about the exploitation of workers. Okay, we agree that there is a problem, and uh, but uh, it is not only in the Olympic Games again, and uh, we should uh, again uh, have stricter regulations about that, and uh, we should um, we should ask all of these companies for transparency because yes, no, 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 there is no time for questions. Uh, because, dear panel, if you want a world where athletes are more and more motivated uh, to uh, uh, to continue f and further develop and to uh, show their best and uh, to preserve this uh, traditional and uh, amazing uh, event of the Olympics, vote for Team uh, Opposition. Thank you. That is the end of my speech. Thank you. Thank you for that speech. Next, we will hear from the opposition reply speaker. Okay, so do you hear me well? Okay, I was starting three, two, one. Dear panel, I needed to remember the three most important things in this debate. First of all, pres preservation of sports. Secondly, spotlight for athletes to show off their talents. And thirdly, continuing a worldwide famous tradition by reforming it and removing the obstacles, not the event itself. That is what we from the side of the opposition are proposing. And now I'm going to compare how the world would look like presented by both sides by comparing two of the main cl clash points that I managed to identify. And this is the clash point about corruption and the clash point about athletes themselves, which was also explained by our third speaker. Standing with corruption, the side of the proposition is telling us that Olympics games are costly. 
They are costless uh, uh, just as any other event. We believe that one of the uh, places that where money are going to the most are the building of facilities and as the first speaker of the proposition mentioned um companions with which sit the cities are trying to be chosen as host cities but that is going to be prevented from happening and a lot of coast will be saved that could be used anywhere else for example for developing the sport itself and we already explained that to you in our previous two arguments every game is costly but the benefits that the Olympic Games are bringing are a lot more from what every other game is bringing. And then we are proposing a world where there are economical benefits for the host cities and the countries. And we're proposing a world, very importantly, where there is a development of sport on a worldwide class. And um, also development of sport on a national level, because... Uh, champions and athletes are preparing in order to show off their talents and show their best. But also, uh, they were talking about the corruption itself that exists in the Olympic Games by denying that there is corruption in other sport areas. And just as we said earlier, there is corruption everywhere. It cannot be fully omitted everywhere. But by reforming the Olympic Games, we can omit that. We can make it less significant and we can still save something as valuable as the Olympic Games, which is giving so many stage and so many uh, chance for people to show their talents and which is serving as motivation to young people. I would like to move on, on to the second clash, which is about their main point about athletes is that they are suffering from men a lot of a high percent of athletes are suffering from mental breakdowns, which is true, but that is the risk of their profession. A sport is a very intensive and competitive sector. And as our third speaker mentioned, um, firstly, these athletes can be visiting a psychologist, even sports psychologists who are especially in this profession to be helping athletes. And they are required to be, athletes are required to be having hard preparation for every competition that they are going to, being the Olympics or something else. But as I earlier said, we are not abolishing other games. We are not abolishing other competitions. Why should we abolish the Olympic Games if we think that this is the one of the main things, the separation of the athletes? I think we think that athletes are having a lot more benefits. Like, for example, they are getting recognition and especially in infamous sports, they are being recognized. And athletes who compete in these infamous sports, they don't have other ways in which could, they could get recognition other than when competing in the Olympic Games. And also, they, they are in this way, they are motivated to continue practice their sport. And they are also inspiring young people all over the world. And that, for everything said in that speech, and if you want to live in a world where sport is important and where problems are dealt with in the core and we are not abolishing them, then vote for the side of the opposition. Thank you very much, side opposition. Lastly, we'll hear from the proposition reply speaker. Everybody can see and hear me well, right? Okay, then let me begin. Now, before I end this debate, I would like to once again, on behalf of my team, thank everybody for participating. It has been a very heated debate, quite frankly, the hardest one that we have had so far. With that being said, let me begin with the end of this debate. Now, uh, like I said, this was a very close debate, no doubt in my mind. However, I think my team had the edge on this debate, and here is why. Firstly, we were better prepared for the debate. I think that we had more arguments. Not only do I think that, but this is true. We presented more arguments. We prepared more arguments, and not only did we prepare more arguments, we managed to um, debunk each, each and every single point we have made. Uh, as far as the other team goes, they managed to debunk only one point that we've made, and I'll give it to them. And I'll give it to them. It's... It's, I believe, the mental, uh, the mental health issue. Uh, reluctantly, I will give them this point, but I believe this is the only argument that has been replied to or debunked in this debate. Why? Well, uh, to summarize the debate, our arguments were about terrorist attacks, completely ignored. They were about the economics, which the only true, uh, true statements that were presented in this debate were ours, as the economics actually suffer more from the Olympic Games, uh, that is including human lives, they suffer more than they gain from the Olympic Games. Uh, we we also discussed cheating. We also discussed corruption. Uh, for all those things, they said that they 
they denied the, their existence, their exclusive existence in the Olympic Games, while we totally disagree. Uh, while they denied their exclusive existence in the Olympic Games, they also didn't give they didn't provide us with any examples whatsoever of such problems occurring in any other sports event. For example, they didn't provide us, they said cheating and corruption happens everywhere. They uh, Also, they put words in my mouth, which I didn't say. I claimed that the only event where cheating has been tolerated like this and uh, political goals and practice, practice practice of political goals has been allowed and tolerated is the Olympic Games. I never said anything about corruption. Corruption is everywhere. That's, uh, that's undeniable. Um, so they misunderstood our arguments. They didn't. They presented like three arguments, all of which we have successfully debunked, I believe. And um, I also believe that our, our style was better as our language was better and more understandable. I believe we made it easier for the judges to understand and hopefully agree with the points that we have made. With that being said, let us end today's very heated debate and uh, may the better team win. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> very great job to both teams. Uh, judges, why don't we head to the 209 prep prop room to have our deliberation? Teams will be back uh, within 10 to 15 minutes after our deliberation to give general feedback about the round. So please stay, stick around. <laughs>